You're listening to the Radical Transformation Speaker Salon, hosted by Nicole Harlow. Four days worth of transformational interviews, meditation, and surprises designed to rock your world and change your life. Your year of soul discovery and wild metamorphosis starts today. Hey everyone, Nicole Harlow here, and it's day one. Um, I'm speaking with Sally Hope, and before we get right down into our cold, juicy, sweet conversation, I just want to take a little time to introduce this beautiful woman. So Sally Hope is a renegade life coach, leader of the Wild Heart Revolution, pun fanatic, hot pink lipstick lover, and country dancer. She's a native Californian who now canoodles in Montana. In the past three years, she's lived in Costa Rica while running her business from the beach, uh, traveled across the country and back twice in a 30-foot-4 RV named Bessie Lou, while doing random acts of kindness and recording it for weekly episodes as Girls Gone Moto, which also gained the attention of the Travel Channel. She built her business from the ground up, uh, traveled in a van with her and her dog and no plan, ventured out on her own, cried a lot, went hunting, cried some more, moved to Montana, cried, bought a motorcycle, and started the Wild Heart Revolution. Prior to her life as a Wild Hearted Life Coach, she got her training and CPCC ACC certification through the Coaches Training Institute. She was an honor student at UCSB, a BA in social psychology, so it's a lot of acronyms right there, a bass player in a touring rock and roll band, a crossword puzzle writer, a nanny, and a self-proclaimed ping pong and arm wrestling champion. Challenge her to a duel, she dares you. She loves good bourbon, creativity, RVing, Joan Jet, skeet shooting, laughing and being ridiculous, astrology, two-step in, bubbly water, stillness, and motorcycle boots. She believes in love community, being a nice person, self-reflection, and living a wild-hearted life. And she's passionate about creating a space for people to live exactly how they want to. So if this sounds like you, you're probably um, a good candidate for Sally's Wild Heart Revolution. Um, You can find her to work one-on-one with a Wild Heart session. You could join her group or you can hang out with her over on Facebook. So you can find her at sallyhope.com. That's sallyhope.com. So we're going to jump right into the interview, but I also wanted to remind you to pick up today's bonuses either in the email that you received for this um, interview for day one, or you can go over to youryearofradicaltransformation.com slash day one and grab your bonus right there. So let's get started. So why don't you, I would love if you could tell everyone, um, let's start out with who you are and what you create in the world. All right. So um, I'm Sally Hope and what I create in the world changes all the time. (laughs) So um, what I like to create right now is um, kind of a blend of um, just living my own personal life in a way that feels very fulfilling and joyful to me, and then letting that inform my work. So one of my favorite things that I like to do is um, just observe life and observe things that happen in everyday life and see how that might apply to perhaps tools or lessons or learning for us all. And then I love to share that on my blog. So what people, um, or how people can find me and what I, you know, when I'm doing air quotes, not that you can see them, but what I do, um, I write on my blog at sallyhope.com. I am a life coach that, um, focuses mostly on a group coaching program called the Wild Heart Revolution, which is a, a group of really dynamic, interesting, multi-passionate, um, many are very adventurous souls. Many want the kind of life that they imagine, and so we all gather together, and um, I look at coaching in a very holistic way, so it's not just like you're a person who wants their business, so let's just coach business, or you just want your love life to be great. Everybody wants all of it. That's kind of how we all are. You know, we, we, want, we want the relationship. We want the business. We want 
fulfilling lives. We want adventure. We want um, to enjoy ourselves. So what I help do is bring me and a team of coaches together and um, approach everybody in a very holistic coaching way inside the Wild Heart Revolution. So that's who I am and what I'm up to right now. Mm, I love, like, I totally connect with what you're saying about, like, what you're creating changes because I am definitely one of those people as well. I mean, if you look back over, I've been an entrepreneur now for almost eight years, so seven or eight years. But if you ask me what I've created in those eight years, it just, there's a crazy amount of stuff in there. It's like books about nutrition and teaching yoga and teaching dance and making websites and doing coaching and like just, you know, sacred sexuality. I ran like my own burlesque studio for a few years. It's like, it's whatever I feel called to start creating in that moment is what will start coming out of me. Absolutely. And that's always why, for me, it's hard to answer the question of like, you know, who am I? Well, that's such an interesting question, you know, because what is that? what does that mean? You know, am I the, I used to be in a rock and roll band in Hollywood and I did that for, you know, a lot of my twenties as a touring musician. And I was also a crossword puzzle writer. I, you know, traveled in an RV doing, you know, little TV show projects and, you know, it's all of it makes up our lives. So it's, it's a fun and funny question of like, you know, who are you? It's like, well, I don't know. I'm Sally. <laughs> <laughs> An amalgamation of all of those different things, yeah. Yeah, and sometimes it's like people ask me, like, what do you do? It's like, okay, how much time do you have for me to answer that question? <laughs> totally. And sometimes for, you know, just to simplify things, I'm like, I, I'm kind of like a counselor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so – you know, coming to the place where you're at right now, where you're you're coaching, you have this Wild Hearts uh, Revolution group. Um, would you say that to get to this place, it was a really conscious choice, or do you feel like the the universe sort of intervened at strategic points in your life to get you here? Well, absolutely both. You know, I mean, I made a conscious choice to make. Um, to make decisions based on what feels like most in alignment for me, for my bigger goals and my, my highest self and whatever you want to call that. So I made those choices. And then from there, you know, the universe kind of took over and put a bunch of different things in my lap where, you know, for example, coaching is a perfect example. I was a musician on tour. You know, I was in Hollywood. I was on that trajectory. I was in the entertainment industry, and I'd never even heard of life coaching at the time. Right. And, you know, I was, like, in that place where I'm like, what am I going to do with my life? And didn't really know, so I didn't want to do music anymore. I was applying to grad schools, and then, you know, somebody was like, you should really be a life coach. You'd be awesome at that. And I was like, what the hell is a life coach? And, (laughs) you know, so... I, I looked into it, I and mean, the story is kind of long, but I looked into it. I, it felt really resonant to me in my body, but it didn't make any logical sense to me. Um, so I kept applying to grad schools, and I got into my top choice school, and then I just felt sick to my stomach. And so, you know, I chose life coaching. And then from there, you know, everything sort of falls into place in very interesting ways. Um, traveling was the same thing. I was never an adventurous person before. I never traveled by myself. I, that was never a goal of mine. Yeah. Uh, but for some reason at that time in my life, it just sort of showed up on my lap. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to keep this opportunity. And then that led to, you know, my RV travels. And then that led to me moving to Montana, which was not part of the plan ever. So you know, I think it's a combo of both. It's very conscious choices and also letting it unfold as well. What was the first, um, the the first traveling opportunity that you got to get with, what was the first one that you did? Well, it was, um, what happened was I was in New York at Marie Forleo's live event and I was like, you know, I'd just broken up with my boyfriend at the time, so I didn't really have anything anchoring me anywhere. And my business, I just finished coaching school, so I'm like, okay, I guess I can go anywhere. Yeah. Um, 
And so I thought, you know, maybe I'll just live in New York for like a couple months and see how that goes. And at the time, I told a friend that I was thinking about subletting my apartment out, you know, for a couple months and whatever. Well, she, about a month or so later, you know, said, are you still looking for that, uh, for somebody to rent your apartment? Because I have somebody who needs a place in Oakland um, for about a month. And so somebody was going to pay my rent for a month, and I had all the opportunities to go anywhere. And I think it was, like, winter, and I didn't want to be in winter in New York. (laughs) So I just decided that I put a Facebook post that said, hey, guys, where should I go that's beachy and beautiful and, you know, easy to get around and all this kind of stuff. And hands down, everyone said Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so I just (laughs) decided to go to Costa Rica. I, I convinced a friend to go with me, and her and I just, after about a week or so of talking about it, bought tickets, had an apartment we rented out, and <laughs> less than a month later, we're on the plane. Where were you? Where, where was your apartment? It was um, in a place called Galicia, which is a tiny farm town that nobody knows about, but it's really near uh, Montezuma, <gasps> which is in the Nicoya Peninsula. Yeah, that's where, oh man, a few years ago, I went to Costa Rica by myself, and went stayed spent like a week in Montezuma and just oh nice yeah absolutely loved it and had such a transformation there because it was one of those wonderful life you know one of the one of those wonderful moments where I just you know followed my intuition just went by myself you know and got to my hostel had kind of picked this hostel at random got to the hostel went up to go get my bunk and there was four girls waiting there and they were just kind of putting their suntan lotion on. And as I came off the steps, they were like, hi, as if they were waiting for me, you know, as if they had waited all day for me to arrive. And then they said, hi, hi, who are you? You know, what do, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm a yoga teacher. And they were like, oh, we're all yoga teachers too. Do you want to come to the beach with us? And what followed from that was just like, Two of them were te- they were there because they were going to be teaching the sacred sexuality and tantra workshop, and they just took me under their wing and said, "Come down with us to, um, uh, you know, almost near Panama, like at the very base of uh, Costa Rica." They said, "Just come with us. They, we've rented this house to do a retreat. Like, just pay for your food. You can come and stay with us and do all these workshops." And I just spent like that whole time doing like kundalini yoga and tantra workshops and just like eating fruit and bouncing around in my bikini and getting massages and man it was just wonderful transformative and life altering for sure one of my life amazing yeah and I've got a real soft spot for Montezuma because I think it's um it's a funnel that brings very like-minded people to that spot absolutely yeah for sure Cool. Yeah, I love having that, you know, Costa Rica connection with you. I'm actually, I'd love to go back to Central America. I'm going to put that on my list. Maybe Nicaragua next time. <laughs> oh, okay, so uh, something that I've been um, asking everyone on these calls that I'm really curious about is, um, I know that you said you, I mean, it seems like you've got a really wild and varied history, but is there a time that really stands out for you? Um, a time of radical transformation. So something that happened in your life where even if it was just reading a book or a conversation or a life event or traveling where the you that emerged bears very little resemblance to the you from before. Yeah, there's a lot of times like that in my life. And um, it's like shedding skin is how I look at it. Mm -hmm. I just make shed skin. So one of the major times was when I touched on a little bit earlier was when I went from being a, a musician in Hollywood to being a life coach. Um, you know, I think that in our lives, we attach a lot of our identity and ourselves to the things that we're doing. So at that time in my life, I was super cool, you know, like yeah. I was a friend in the friend group that was like a rock star and was hanging out with rock stars and celebrities in Hollywood and on tour and um, wearing, you know, really creative, interesting leather outfits. And, um, you know, my hair was just 
fun and my makeup, you know, it was a whole thing. Yeah. And that became part of who I was or who I thought I was. And I attached a lot of importance to that person. So Sally Hope, the bass player for this band in LA, matters, right? And as that was winding down and my spirit was calling for something else, it wanted something deeper and something more. And um, I had a well, I had a hard time with that transition of shedding the skin of the rock star and then being like, who am I now that I'm moving into this world of coaching? Mm-hmm. And it, it was uncomfortable, kind of like growing pains where, you know, I don't know what my outfit is anymore or what my thoughts are anymore or what I – what I do, what am I going to tell people? You know, saying you're a rock star is really different than saying I'm a life coach, which most people are like, what is that? Or if they do know, they're like, oh, yeah, my aunt so-and-so does that, you know, or something <laughs> like that. Um, so it was a huge transformation. And um, I've had many, many other ones since then, you know, going from relationship, house dog, car, to single girl with a business, Um, also from um, somebody who doesn't travel to somebody who does, somebody who lives in California to somebody who lives in um, Montana, or, you know, every phase, I think, of life has a big shedding of skin moment, and for me, they've usually preceded pretty big identity shifts. Um, And the question usually is, who am I if I'm not doing this thing that I've been doing up to the point that people know me for, that I've gotten very comfortable on the skin of? Mm. So when when you were at the point where you stopped um, playing music and you moved into life coaching, was that uh, more of a gradual process or was there one of those like, you know, lightning bolt, like, I'm going to do this now, you know, where I'm stopping this one thing, you know, and I'm moving on to a completely different path. For me, the lightning bolt happens, but not in that way. So what, what the lightning bolt does for me is it sends me a thought of this doesn't feel right anymore. Okay, and that's, yeah. that's always the thought in whatever change is going to happen, whether it's a relationship that's not going to work or a job that's not working anymore or something like that, or a, a town or a city. Um, the lightning bolt is, oh my gosh, this doesn't feel right. But then what happens is there's a lot of exploration, there's research, there's, I don't know, what would I do if I didn't do music? What am I, you know, what do I want? I don't even know what I want. Do I want to be in LA? Do I not want to be in LA? You know, so the, the thought is very clear and it's a lightning bolt, but the transition from that to the next thing took me a while and it tends to for me. Yeah take me a while. And once I get to the point where I'm like, okay, this other thing is the thing I want to take and run with, that's when I have very, very clear decisions. I don't look back. I'm not worried about it. But it it takes me a while of back and forth, back and forth to get to that point. Yeah, I really connect with that. I'm I'm really similar. I'm not like, I feel that like the lightning bolt will just be the thought or the feel, almost like the realization that like, hmm, something is not really this isn't really feeling right anymore and I'm actually like to be honest I'm feeling that right now in my life being here in Malta because I seem to have about a five to six month window of time where like I'm blissed out in where I am at but then once it gets to like five or six months I check in with myself and the feeling is like nah I'm ready for something different now it doesn't matter what it is you know I've allow myself to explore lots of different locations and city, rural, beach, you know, mountains in a van and an apartment. And it's still the same. There's just like, I get to that period and I'm just ready to move on, you know, but I think even now there's still resistance that I come up against, which is this uh, feels like a conditioning of like, no, this is almost like, this is the last time. Like, this is the last place that you get to pick. Like, you have to stay here now. And I'm like, who says I have to stay here? Like, that's just this, you know, really, like, deliberate part of my brain saying, like, no, you have to stay because you've had... I don't know, maybe it's even an upper limit kind of thing where it's 
it feels like, no, but you have had too many exciting choices already. So now this has to be the last one that you get to make. Oh, so like you're good, you're good must run out because you've yeah. had too much good already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like here, you know, where I'm, I can feel that natural desire in me because I love change and transformation and seeing new things. And I feel like, you know, this is a very small island. It's only 20 20 miles long so I feel like I've seen most of it now pretty much all of it now plenty of times so I can feel that part of myself is just like right I'm ready for something new I'm ready for something new but then there's an antagonistic part that's like no but you have like now you're at the beach in paradise you don't get to have something else this is what you get to you know this is yours now forever and I'm like and then I just go like no you know no I'm claustrophobic no I want to move you know so I always I don't make the rash decisions I have the feeling that okay this is not right anymore and I need to you know come up with a different thing and then there's always a period of going back and forth with like yes I get to I deserve to to move yes I'm in a position where I can move and I can try new things no it's not wrong if I want to live somewhere else no, it's not wrong if I want to live, you know, three different places a year. Like you were saying about being in California and Montana, you know, maybe that for you is, is perfect, you know, having like the the combination of these two really different places and two really different energies. I'm sure that feeds your soul to have that. Well, yeah, and I think, I think that it is, um, I think there is a misconception that some people have it easy where it's just like they make a decision and go. And I think there's a lot of guilt and um, a lot of layers of emotions that happen when we make decisions and we look at other people and we're like, well, they don't struggle like I do. But I think that most people have this process where it's like, okay, idea, and then a certain amount of time where you go back and forth, go back and forth, and go back and forth until there's finally that that last lightning bolt, bolt moment that says, you know what, I I can move. I can do what I want. I can decide that I'm the type of person that lives somewhere for as long as I want to and then leave whenever I feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think um, the people who are in my circle that maybe don't know me as intimately, but they just kind of whether through Facebook or, you know, just being on the periphery, they see my life style it may seem really rash like I make decisions quite quickly but I don't actually I spend a lot of time deliberating and for sure there's a lot of like big pieces of paper with pros and cons lists on either side to like you know really dig into what I want you know and then questioning a bit further like what it is um whether it's the feeling that I'm that I'm chasing and what kind of you know what feeling that is yeah. Uh-huh. Hmm. So, um, let's see. I, oh, it's something that I wanted to say to you is I was reading, um, I love one of your like more recent blog posts that I just stumbled upon, which you were saying, um, why not do things completely the opposite of how you would normally do it or think about things completely the opposite of how you would normally think about it. And I love that. And I just thought your instructions were so simple and playful. It's like, take what you were going to do and um, do the opposite of it. And then just, like, see. This concept changed my life. Yeah. I, I started doing this exercise maybe six years ago or something like that. I, and I don't remember how it came into my life. But it's really simple. People always think, you know, why am I, why do the same things always happen to me? Why do I always end up with this kind of guy or that kind of girl? Or why am I always stuck in a job I hate? And if you look at it, it's probably because you're making the same choices that you always make. You're choosing that kind of guy or you're choosing that relationship or um, you're not doing the things that would make your result be different. So it's a very simple concept, and it's just like if you're not happy, you look at what you're doing and what you normally do in that situation. You know, say I'm constantly fighting with my boyfriend about whatever. Okay, well, how do you, how would you normally respond to this conversation and then just do the opposite? Yeah. So if you usually would engage and start yelling, maybe the opposite would be like, 
okay, let me try to understand where you're coming from. Can you explain it to me? (laughs) And that's a totally opposite reaction than what you maybe normally would do. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to try that out. I mean, it just, it's one of those things, as soon as I read it, it it's like, like you said, it's so simple. And I was actually having a really lovely conversation um, yesterday with a, a woman called Nadia. And we were talking about um, the desire map. And um, I love the desire map. She loves the desire map. And we were both just talking about how that concept of um, operating from your core desired feeling or just sitting there and, and thinking about what is the feeling behind what I want to do or what my goals are, what I want to buy, you know, what will this car, you know, what is the feeling that I'm chasing and buying this brand new car or these organic vegetables or, or anything. And it was, when I got to that concept in that book, it was just like so simple, but I really understood it at like a deep soul level that I already knew it, you know? And that's how, like, that's what you wrote about just doing the opposite. It was like, yeah, yeah, I already know this. It's just a reminder of it. It's like so, so sweet. Totally, and it's still a reminder to practice because I find, you know, I, I come across absolutely brilliant, aware um, being constantly in my work. And, you know, the idea is, oh, I know this already. I know this already. I've heard this already. And we do. We all know already. It's just a matter of using the tool we have or remembering to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you use, um, do you use any like core desired feelings like in your day, you know, do you write them down or do you, is that a practice that you have in your life? Like writing down, you know, for um, the year or for the day or anything like that? I have a lot of different practices. Um, one of them is I'll do intentions for the day, Okay. but I also start my day off with a technique I I've created called the love technique, which is just a way of discovering what your emotions actually are in that moment. So, you know, sometimes we'll wake up with stress or maybe we're worried or maybe we're sad or maybe we're excited or whatever it is. But I, I have found that um, being aware of the emotions that are actually happening for me and then the ones that are underneath that and then the ones that are underneath that really allow me to approach my day in a conscious way um, so that I'm not making choices and I'm not doing things that are um, from like the surface level, but rather the core of what's actually happening for me. And that helps me be more connected to my core desired feeling. If I'm like, okay, you know, I know what's going on. I know what emotion is actually here right now. And I know how I can switch it now to the ones that I want to be having. And would, okay, so you wake up and you are assessing where you're at mood-wise. Now, if you, had, after you did that assessment, would it change how you structured the rest of your day based on, like, what the mood was? Um, it's not so much that it's um, how I structure my day based on my mood. It's more like I can start my day from a very conscious place. Okay. So, you know, let's say you wake up anxious or worried or something like that. Um, if I just let my my day start there, I might make very different choices than if I'm like, oh, okay, you know, my anxiety is actually really just sadness or I'm, you know, really just kind of feeling angry right now. Okay, I know what's happening. Right. So I can make choices from that place. Cool. And what did you if call you're, this? I'm sorry? What did you call this? It's called the love technique, L-O-V-E, and each letter stands for a different um, practice within the technique, a different set of questions to ask yourself. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is there anything else that you do in your in your morning practice on a regular basis? I do. I journal. So I, I journal that, and I also meditate. So I meditate for 20 minutes. Um and I do some intentions, and then I just have a I just have a routine for myself. So um, I'll take my time eating breakfast and drinking some tea, and it usually takes me about an hour ish to do all that stuff. And then I and then I'll check, you know, my emails and do all that stuff. And in your in your when you actually get down to work, do you have like? 
like an organizational process that kind of sets you up for the day? Like, do you write out like goals or intentions or, um, you know, anything like that, that sort of sets you up for, for work wise? Yeah. So I utilize time blocking every day, all day long, even on the weekends which is just blocking out and color coding time based on different um, tasks in your day. And I include things like lunch. I include exercise. I include personal time. I include work. I include emails, calling my mom, things like that. So what I'll do is I'll have those color blocks um, at least the week before, if not sometimes more. And I'll usually go in the night before and look at the next day and think about, okay, what really needs to get done? What needs to be on this list that's not on this list? And then I put it on the calendar right there. And I structure my entire day around the, the blocks of time. Cool. And you, for me, you're, you seem to be someone who manages um, social media interactions very well. I mean, I see you like online a lot, posting a lot, but... How do you keep um, how do you keep that organized, and how do you keep the boundary between um, social media persona and you know that you at home? Is that part of your color block system as well? Like, are you you know having specific time to be on social media, and then you're just going to rock it out for like two hours? I do. Um, I definitely color block, time block out, all of that stuff. So as far as social media goes, I plan that out the week before, and I go through and I have a spreadsheet and I have a system of the types of things I like to post, um, and what days I like to post them and what times I like to post them, and I'll go in and I'll do the full calendar and load it up, or I'll have my VA load it up um, the week before, and then when it goes live, I pay attention to um, what's being said and what conversation is happening, and that all is time blocked. And so my time in the B-School groups and other groups and in my wild heart group um, and in my own social media is all part of my schedule. Cool. Yeah, I love that. I'm, I actually I use a system that's very similar. And, um, and what you just said is really similar to the way that I approach social media and that, like, I pre-schedule um, and I organize my posts ahead of time. So then, then I block out time to be on social media. Because for me, when I do that and I organize it ahead of time, when I'm on social media, I'm actually there to connect. I'm not there to worry about what am I going to post and blah, 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 and I've got to get this all set up. It's like I'm there to answer questions, help out, you know, provide value. And um, the other thing that I do is I have uh, a Chrome extension on my computer called Newsfeed Eradicator, and it just takes my Facebook newsfeed off. So there is absolutely no pressure and no pull for me to go in and check Facebook other than the times when I've allotted for myself to be on. Um, that's brilliant. I'm totally going to check that out. <laughs> yeah, it's newsfeed, newsfeed Eradicator, and it takes away just the newsfeed, so you'll have the rest of the perimeter of Facebook, so you'll see, you can get into your groups, you can see if someone's emailed you, so I actually use Facebook as more of a secondary email system, because sometimes clients get you know, back to me on Facebook rather than emailing. And um, instead of seeing your news feeds, you just see an inspirational quote. And it's usually a quote about getting back to work, which is usually what I need to do at that point. So I just go, thank you. <laughs> okay. And I just shut it down again. <laughs> I love that. It's brilliant. Yeah. So the only way I can get onto the news feed is when I'm on my cell phone. And that's different, you know, when I'm on my iPhone and it's like, that's kind of my play time. And I've allowed myself the time to just like, you know, just scroll through the Facebook feed and see what people are up to. But I also unsubscribe to most notifications, like in groups and things like that. Um, because I, you know, I'm busy and I like the work, you know, I like to stay in my creative bubble. And so as long as I can give some more protection to myself of everything else that's competing for my attention then I'll do that, you know. So as soon as I join a group, I just turn off the notifications and then I you know, go in periodically, like I even have a schedule of like the groups that I'm in and which days I like to spend time kind of hanging out in those groups and providing value and posting things. And I just try to stick to that as much as possible. And I find, yeah, that it's really helpful in um, 
you know, creating that boundary, but still being helpful and active and social. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Sounds like an awesome plugin. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm sure that you experience this as well as like the life of an entrepreneur can be quite lonely and isolating sometimes. So it, I'm not against or anti social media. I like having that time during the day to check in with other people who are on a similar path. You know, otherwise it would just be me and my computer all day. Absolutely. <laughs> oh man, so Sally, I'm I'm curious. Is there um, are there any really big like I, you know I think goal can be a loaded term sometimes, but just you know take it for what it is. But are there any really like big kind of walk through fire goals that you'd like to achieve in the next like year or two? And by like walk through fire, I mean like the kind of thing that it makes like your palms sweat to sort of think about it, you know, you'd be like nervous, but you know, if you achieve it, it would just be like friggin' awesome. Um, you know, it's really funny. My relationship with goals is really different for me now. Um, than it used to be in my business. So I have things that I want and feel and I feel them in my gut and I feel them deeply. Um, but I'm not afraid of them. It doesn't feel like that anymore. Okay. So, how it feels to me is um, is that it's happening already, even though if even if it's not actively happening. So the things that I really want, I have personal goals, and then I have um, service goals, like of the world. And part of that for me is that the love technique reaches the masses, that it becomes um, used in schools, used in trainings, used with coaches. Coaches implement it with their clients, and it's a way of getting to the root of whatever somebody comes to us all for or whatever is um, challenging in our lives in a really quick and really simple way. So that, to me, I see that as a book, a series of books. I see it as trainings. I see it as um, speeches, public speaking. So to me, that, that vision is so clear to me that it's exciting. Um, and then I know that if, when I get there, then there'll be another one. <laughs> so it's not like I have, I don't have the feeling that I'm like, okay, once I do this, then I'll know I've made it, you know? I think that I look at it like that's the next thing on my mind. Exactly, exactly. And so similar, as soon as I, I feel like every big uh, goal, quote unquote, like whether it was, um, I wrote a book a few years back and it's like, I really hustled like getting that thing out. And um, every time I finish a big project, I swear I get a little bit of like postpartum depression afterwards because it's just like, I spent all this like love and energy, like birthing this thing. And then I get its birth and it's like, you know, I'm at the top of the mountain now, I'm at the plateau. And all I could do is just be like, where is my next mountain? <laughs> like, you know, I like, uh, it's good to have like a little breath, like at the end, but then I'm like, pretty quickly, I'm looking around to see like, where is the next mountain that I can start climbing? Because that feels like, that's a zone that I'm really comfortable with. Like, I love feeling challenged. And I love feeling uh, growth, you know, and transformation through that act of like, creating and creating yeah birthing new projects and like doing something that's gonna expand my container wider and bigger than it was before for sure so how can how can people yeah about, and I, um, I i think that a lot of the conversation that i've noticed too is um that idea of like if only i get this thing then i'll feel successful or when i when i reach this goal monetary or otherwise um, then my life will start. Or people do this with, with relationships all the time. You know, well, when I meet the perfect guy, then then I'll be happy in my life. And what happens is you meet the guy or you get the job or you make the money and you find yourself still not happy. And so what I find really interesting is just making choices of how we want to spend our time based on what we like doing with our time. You know, if creating a book or a program or a business or something like that is, is in and of itself the thing that makes you feel fulfilled, fulfilled then to me, that's success. You know, if a person, um, what they love doing with their time is being at home with their family and 
raising their children at home, then to me, that's success. And I think that um, what I've noticed after being the type of person who has a lot of ambition and lots of goals, and then I've reached them, you know, the ones that I set out to reach, I reach. And like you, what happens after that? You feel kind of depressed because you're like, well, now I did that thing and I don't feel any different and I still want more things. <laughs> so what I find really interesting is, is that game of like, okay, what game do I want to play right now? Like what mountains are fun to climb and why? And, and why am I doing it? Is it arbitrary? Is it, um, is it for a specific purpose for myself? Um, so that to me is the conversation that I find really fascinating about goals and dreams. I was going to ask you, um, where can people uh, find the love work that you do? Is that something that, like, is there a download somewhere, or is it something that you learned in the Wild Heart Revolution? Um, we definitely go over it a lot in the Wild Heart Revolution right now. All what's available publicly is a blog post and a video I can link to. Oh, yeah. Um, I can share that with everyone. Yeah, but if... Yeah, but it's currently in the process of being built as a more um, downloadable uh, technique, and so it's it's in the incubation stage right now. But I can definitely point you guys to um, to the article where you can find out more about it. Cool. Yeah. So everyone, keep your eyes peeled for that because that just sounds awesome. And yeah, so many good vibes for creating that because it seems really necessary in the world, for sure. Thank you. So besides, um, besides that tool, are there any other, like, um, tools, techniques, or even, like, mindset shifts that for you, you would just, you know, tell people they're great for transformation? Like, even a book, like, if there was a book that you read that you just thought was, like, whoa, you know, that was so life-changing after I read that. Yeah, um, Tosha Silver's Outrageous Openness. Oh, I love that one, Yeah. It's an absolutely amazing book. I loved that one. Yeah, um, that's actually on the, the reading list for the, the program that I'm putting together because I just think it's, it's superb. Great. Yeah, I love that book. Um, as far as tools and techniques, what I, the way I, I like to look at um, life and happiness and everything is, is to be an explorer of your own inner world. So a lot of times we unconsciously go through life having things that, that happen for us. We're afraid, we react, we're triggered, we're fearful, we're, we feel guilty, we're shame, you know, we feel shame. We have all these emotions that are very difficult to handle for us, and we're used to ignoring them because, or pushing them away or distracting ourselves away from them in, in ways like alcohol, food, other people, distractions like Facebook, whatever it is, because our emotions are so hard for us to handle. This is actually exactly what the te love technique does. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know that technique, if that's not something um, in your world right now, there's a lot of other things you can do. So what I first like to suggest is, is be an explorer of your thoughts. Just question them. Say, is that true? One thought you have might be, I can't put myself out there. My parents are going to, like, think I'm crazy. Is that true? Are you sure that's true? Yeah. Um, just start learning to question the internal dialogue that you have and um, make it a practice for yourself to ask yourself if it's true, to say, what's happening for me right now? Um, another really great thing to do is get help. Therapists are great, coaches are great, mentors yeah. are great, but, you know, we all have these set of practices and structures we built from our childhood, from our lives, from every situation that's been traumatic or painful, and we use those, as, those wounds are the things that are walking around making decisions, but until we know a little bit more about who we are and what's underneath all of that stuff and where that's coming from, we can continue to live in this in this kind of place where we're um, not fully connected to what's actually happening. So my best suggestion is get help, get support. Yeah. So well said. Um, I just agree with you 100%, especially along the, like, getting help. I am, you know, I am not ashamed to say that I'm a recovering perfectionist. I spent most of my adult life and 
teenage life thinking that to get help it was a sign of weakness and I have to say that when I finally was able to shed that skin the transformation and the growth was just staggering you know just it's so wonderful to finally like get to a place where I feel comfortable reaching out for help whether that's help in my business or just you know help as in like an energy worker or like hey you know I need some Reiki it would be really good for me right now you know I need someone to talk to so I definitely heartedly agree with what you said oh man yes yeah. oh man it's been so nice to talk to you we're kind of coming to the you, end. Lady. yeah I just I wanted to see do you still feel comfortable doing a food future self meditation for all of us just like a short little guided meditation yeah, so um, this is a meditation, a guided meditation that I am borrowing from my coaching school. And we learned this in school, and we were in the audience. So um, I, ha- I did this myself, and it was very helpful for me. And it's a way for you to meet your higher self, your your authoritative, visionary person inside yourself that always has your best interest in mind, that always knows um, what choices to make and what steps to take. They, this, this person inside yourself, it doesn't have to be masculine or feminine or human or even an animal. It can be an energy. It can be anything. And so what this is for is to help you have more access to all the wisdom inside yourself and access to this person at any time because so many times in our lives we're like, what should I do? What do I do? Do I stay? Do I go? Do I do this business or that business? And I find that um, decisions are at the source of a lot of our suffering and pain and not knowing which decisions to make. So this meditation, I hope, gets you closer to that part inside yourself and in this meditation, we call it the captain that knows, the guiding force that knows and that you can turn to whenever you are feeling lost or feeling like you don't know where to go. Okay. Sounds awesome. Um, yeah. So if you haven't already, find a comfortable position so that you can relax and take a short journey to meet your captain. Maybe just put both feet on the ground, maybe you're laying down, wherever you are, get present, get comfortable, and just allow yourself the space to get lost in these words and see what shows up for you. Take a deep breath in, and as you release that breath, let yourself relax even deeper and deeper into the space that you're in. Notice where in your body you might be tense. Breathe into that place and let that tension go on the exhale and relax even further. Another breath now, letting go. As you relax even more, let your imagination just wander. Let it go. Let it take you to a place that is completely safe. Just make it up. Sense it or see it. It's all fine. As you imagine this place, look around. What do you notice? Where are you? What does it feel like? Whatever you see, imagine or sense is exactly as it should be. Wherever you are, notice what is around you. Sense or see the details. Take in the colors and sounds. You might want to touch something. What are the smells here? Let it all come so alive. You can almost taste it. As you walk around and get to know the safe place, you hear the sound of someone approaching. 
and there is a sense of excitement in the air. You are about to meet someone special, and now they come into view. Your captain walks towards you, eager to meet you as well. As your captain approaches, notice this. What does your captain look like? What stands out about your captain? What is it like being with your captain? What does it feel like to be in your captain's presence? This is the leader within you, your inner authority, your captain. Now greet one another. Notice what it's like. Feel into it and notice. What does the energy of your captain feel like? Your captain has always been here, and now you have access to each other in a new and conscious way. So find a place in the safe space to be with each other for a conversation. Sit down and get comfortable, or maybe you go on a walk, or maybe you're looking out at the view but simply find a place to be with each other and have a conversation. As you sit down, or as you continue to walk, ask the following questions and listen carefully for the answers. Ask, what is important for me to know about you? What do you want from me? What do you know about my life purpose? How can I connect easily with your wisdom and your strengths? And lastly, what is the name by which I will call you? And as you're done, asking these questions of your captain, notice that they have a gift for you. Receive their gift. What is it? What do you notice about it? Ask them, what would you like me to know about this gift? And now we'll be drawing this meeting to a close. This is a time to thank each other knowing you can be with your captain any time you choose. Your captain is here for you to support you in your journey of living your life purpose. Now take a deep breath, breathing in this experience, remembering what you need to remember. Another breath, returning to this space and time, and take another deep breath. Begin to open your eyes and stretch and move your body a little. Wiggle your fingers and toes. And maintaining silence, take a few notes about this experience. Write down anything you would like to remember. And that's it. Mm. Oh my God, thank you so much, Sally. That was, that took me deep. Oh yeah, what yeah. did you discover? So um, I was actually a bit surprised because usually visualizations are quite um, difficult for me. Um, I'm a very like verbal processor and I've always found it really difficult to just like see things in my head, but Right now, I did not have a problem at all. I saw everything really clearly. My uh, my safe space, <laughs> believe it or not, was um, first thing that came up for me was this flotation tank that I had gone in in Portland when I was like hanging out around Portland, and it was the first time I had ever gone in a flotation tank, and it was, it was pro for me it was probably the most relaxing and safest space that I had been in in a long time. I think it's because I knew it was dark and it was quiet 
and I knew that for that hour I wasn't going to be disturbed. It was like uh, it was one of those few times that I really get to, because I'm I'm easily distracted. And so yes, I could go out into the woods and sit and meditate and know that I'm not being distracted. But I mean that someone else is going to come along. But I could hear like the birds and the bugs and the rustling in the trees would even be enough to like take my attention away. So this flotation tank was for me just a very like safe and quiet uh, sensory deprived place and so that was the first thing that came up for me is I was first I was in the tank and then I thought no I don't want to be in the tank so I was just in the room with the tank in there and I knew I could be in this therapy room kind of sitting on the chair and then the person that came in was like uh I guess it was an, an older version of me, but she was very, like, professorial, and I think she reminded me of, like, uh, teachers that I really loved when I was in school, you know, just, just so, like, a really intelligent, um, really intelligent, like, woman, you know, she had short curly hair, and I could see her so clearly, and um, when I gave her, like, when I embraced her, and I kind of took her into my space, the thing that I wrote down when we finished was just strength. Like I just felt her like so strong and so loving. She just wrapped her arms around me. And um, the gift that she gave me, I just, yeah, I just let myself kind of go wherever it was going to go. And the gift that she gave me was this, um, this beating heart. And she put it in my hands and it was like, I think initially I was like, Oh, this is kind of grotesque, you know, this like beating heart in my hands. But the message was like, here I am and my heart is still beating and I'm still like alive and strong and I'm even more vibrant than, than I was before. And I found a lot of, um, a lot of like great strength from that and energy about my own life. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have... And even after we get off this call, I'm sure I'll have a few more notes that I want to scribble down about some things that, you know, just that it would, that it jogged for me. But I really like that practice. Yeah. And I can't believe I, how accessible it was. I dropped right into it. Amazing. I'm so glad. Yeah. And it's just, I, thank you, because I just feel like um, I definitely will go back to this this place again you know and start asking and start talking to her know that she's there like waiting for me always mm. she's always there awesome thank you sally so much this was just so wonderful to talk with you and i'm sure everybody else has just loved to listen to this conversation thank you so much for having me and it's been a blast lady thank you yeah no problem i have to speak to you soon and have a an awesome day you too. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. So there you have it, folks. Um, don't forget to sign up for your bonuses today over at youryearofradicaltransformation.com slash day one. So head over there or check your email that this um, recording came in and make sure that you grab your bonus for today. Speak to you soon. Bye.